Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Why am I on the bike? Why am I not in front of that cave? Well, do I have a surprise for you? This is not it. Little visit from Dawn here. She has a surprise. Okay, ooh, that's a 50-50, I don't know. Lefty Lucy, righty tidy. Let's go left. Doesn't matter which hand you pick. You automatically get the Verse Seeker. This was introduced back in Fire Red and Leaf Green, I think. And it might have been called something different in maybe Emerald or something, but I know for a fact it was in that game and it was called the Verse Seeker. So we get that, and we get the Dowsing Machine Po Catch app. Wow. The generosity of Dawn has depths beyond our imagination. So it does exactly what it says on the tin. If you've ever played Skyward Sword, you should be plenty familiar with dowsing. You use the app. We'll demonstrate this in a moment here. Maybe if Don would get the heck out of here. All right. Taking many steps. We're doing great. Team is awesome. And here it is. So I forget how to do this. All right. So I think we click. You click around on the screen. And if there's an item, oh, it appears there is. I don't know exactly what this means, but it's there if you want to explore and play around with it. But that's for another time. We actually have some cleanup to do. One of the things that's very important, at least in this game, is there are a couple locations that when you try to enter a cave, in this case, the Wayward Cave that our Wayward Son was in, he's not able to carry on at the moment because we need a pseudo HM. Now, for whatever reason, they decided to improve the quality of life of this game and have all the HMs be handled by whatever, off-screen Pokemon. That's great. That was a great choice. They introduced those types of things in like X and Y, and like Sun and Moon. Really appreciate not having to devote move slots to HMs. But there is one move that they did not convert to an HM. And for whatever reason, if you want it, if you want to be able to explore a cave and not bonk around like me in my childhood in Rock Tunnel, which the the sheer nightmare fuel of that experience for when I was a child is unparalleled. If you want to make actual good progress and not have to just bing bong around you're going to need something very special. It's not a Zubat. Although, a Zubat would be pretty useful, given bats and their echolocation. That'd be pretty fantastic. But unfortunately, we are not a bat. We are not the Batman. But we are owners of Flash. So now we can Flash whoever we want, which is great. You need this if you want to actually have a decent time exploring the handful of caves that are in this game. I don't have an exact pulse on how many it is, but there's at least two that I can think of off the top of my head where I do believe that you need Flash. Now, the difficulty that you might encounter is that Flash is a pretty unremarkable move. It is akin to Sand Attack, and putting it on a Pokemon where you wouldn't really want to... What is this girl doing? Where you wouldn't want to sacrifice a move slot is completely understandable. As understandable it is that I'm getting very annoyed that I keep having random encounters. So, Flash is a move that will take up a move slot. And the fear that you might have when you play is that if you give up a move slot, we found Ziggy Stardust. If you 
use a move slot for Flash. The... Oh my goodness, I can't even ride my bicycle. I just want to ride my bicycle. Bicycle. Okay, so hopefully these Pokemon can stop. I actually do have a solution for this, and I'm going to use it now. I bought off-screen. I did a little bit of consumerism. Bought myself some Revival Herbs just for the sake of not wanting to have my Pokemon faint in this upcoming cave. And Oops, that's not how you do that. Great. That's a tutorial on how not to do that. We don't forget, our bike has two gears on it. The faster one's the one you want here. Woo! And when you do that, you can take it over some sweet jumps. And get Brick Break. This is not obviously required, but... Brick Break is a pretty cool move. It is a move that... You know... Maybe in a past life I would teach to... Chimchar if it didn't have... So many cool fighting type moves, but I do have 20 repels. And I do have a feeling that I'm going to burn through those pretty heckin' fast on my way out. So, now that I do have Flash, the conundrum becomes, who do I teach Flash to? Now, why is that a problem? Because it does take up a move slot. Do you use it on a Pokemon that you want to keep on your team to continue to reap the benefit of the experience all? Or... Do you put it on a, you know, a one-move TM slave that you don't waste that? That's the choice you gotta make. I have an idea in my head if I can find something that will go along with my team. It has to happen though, prior to me getting into the cave itself though. There actually is a unique Pokemon that's in this grass, so I will wander around here for a few moments. Let's see if I can find it. It is not Stunky, but I do like Stunky. So I actually might catch one. I don't know if Stunky can use... Ooh, it's a female Stunky too. I think Stunky is poison and dark, so... And it's a little bit weaker than I would like it to be. So we'll switch out to Samuel. Samuel has some weaker moves and isn't really super offensively oriented, so it does make things a little bit on the nicer side to be able to whittle things down. Normally would just shoot my goo on it. That's Badoo. Burp. But. That move is not foolproof, unfortunately. Okay, so that's awesome. That's not what I wanted to happen at all. Great. So there's a, another count towards another knock of gaining experience that I do not want. I actually am okay with these random encounters, for now, just because I'm trying to find something in particular here. I know that there is something out here. Actually, maybe I do use Bart. Maybe I do use Bart. And I do know for a fact that Bart can learn Flash. But there may be some more fortuitous moves in the future that Flash would get displaced by. Now. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, so if you have Flash and you're in a cave, what happens if you need it again in the future? You can buy Flash in a future city's market. So no worries, you will have full ability to buy future Flash TMs. If you put it on a Pokemon that you just want to swap in and out, that would do the trick, but I'm the kind of person where I try to keep the team intact if I can. All right, so this Stunky is being very annoying, but I really do love Stunky's Sprite. It is very cool. Hopefully Craig is not too strong. These moves are kind of garbage right now, but that's okay. Hopefully we can headbutt it once and not kill it. Great, that might be enough. I'm not too keen on really trying to capture a bunch of Pokemon. But this one was just kind of hard to pass up. Would have made more sense to call Stunky Steve, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so Miguel has leveled up off of 
Blood experience. All right, here we go. Stunky, the skunk Pokemon, protects itself by spraying a noxious fluid from its rear. The stench lingers for 24 hours. Unlike Stunky, I have never had stench come from me from my rear end, especially not something that would last 24 hours. So Stunky will be... Had a request for this in a previous episode, so we'll name Stunky Spin. And I don't know if I really... I want to send Spin to the box for now. I don't really have a spot for a Stunky in the moment. But I might in the future. So, if you're a big Stunky Stan, Stan would have made sense too. Stanley. Not really digging too deep into the old uh, Cerebral Cortex for these names. Most of d -Mike plays is done on autopilot using my lizard brain. So, I'm going to spend a few more moments in here to see if I can nab what I want. Here it is. This is what I was looking for. Bronze ore. So this is a weird Pokemon that was introduced in this generation. It's a Steel and Psychic type, which I think is interesting. It's more along the lines of being a, a wall or a tank Pokemon. It's very slow, but its defenses are sky high. It also knows a lot of moves that are annoying, so... I would like to have that on my side instead of the other way around. So one of the nice things that when it comes to trying to train Pokemon is having something like Miguel. Having something that knows Nightshade is really nice because most Pokemon are at least going to have 24 HP. So you're not doing damage based on effectiveness, you're doing damage based on your HP to theirs. So as long as the Bronzor has at least 24 HP, you're not going to kill it. So that's really nice. Bronzor's starting move set, not great. It does learn some decent stuff in the not too distant future. So we'll go with that. Having a psychic type Pokemon is potentially useful for upcoming gym battles, we'll see. So here's Bronze or the Bronze Pokemon, great name. Doesn't have a footprint as you can see because it has no feet. Implements shaped like Bronze or were discovered in ancient tombs. It is unknown whether they are related. Sounds like they needed a 23 and me. Because we don't have too many female names, Bronzor is genderless because it is a disc of whatever. We are going to name it Brandy. Just to even things out a little bit. I feel like Brandy could be kind of a gender neutral name. And we will add Brandy to the party. In this case, Steven's not super useful for this upcoming cave exploration, this spelunking we're about to do. So, we will have Brandy, ooh, Brandy has an item. Sometimes you'll find a Pokemon with an item, Metal Coat. We will swap that held item though. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I would like to give an item. Great. So because Brandy is incredibly slow, we're going to give it the Quick Claw, which should help a little bit. Brandy's a little bit damaged because we just bonked it on its cute little noggin. So instead we're gonna give it the old Kiss of a Potion. That's a good idea. And it's very tempting to have Brandy and Craig be at the top of the crop here. Very tempting. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit, but I have a feeling that it's not going to be as enjoyable as I would like it to be. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna sort my TMs by number because that's how I'm used to it. So we check out Brick Break and Flasher in a moment. Here's Brick Break. User attacks with a swift chop. Can also break barriers such as light screen and reflect. Only Charlie can learn that and Charlie does not need to learn that because he already has two fighting moves and that would be very redundant. Flash. The user flashes a light that lowers the target's accuracy. Can also be used to illuminate caves. Okay, so we'll teach that to Bart for now. Just be mindful that using this TM it will break, obviously. We're gonna get rid of Worry Seed because Worry Seed is stupid. But using this TM, if you overwrite this TM and you leave this cave at any point, just to be mindful of that, you will not have it again. And it will be, I think, two or three gym laden cities before you'll have an opportunity 
to get another flash tab. So just keep that in mind. You play however you want to, but if exploring this cave is something that is of impetus for you, and you feel very inclined to do it, just try to keep that in your noggin. But you're gonna wanna keep that flesh around. So here we are, we are in the Wayward Cave. As you can see, very dark. I like my coffee. How I like my caves, dark, foreboding, full of rocks. Okay, so there we go. This is why I bought a bunch of repels because this cave is full of the most obnoxious Pokemon. It's a bit of a, a bit of a labyrinth. It's not too bad. I guarantee I will get lost. Once you start breaking up these rocks with rock smash, which you have to do, once you start to break these up, there is no real way, unless you're making yourself a little map as you go, which I'm not because here at DMIC Industries, we trust our gut. You may, you may get lost. And when I say may, that is a word. And there's also bronzer in the cave. When I say may, that is a, a tentative thing that I'm saying for you. You, you may get lost. I will almost certainly get lost, so. Prepare yourselves for a 45 minute episode of me wandering around the Wayward Cave, because that is high quality content. That's what you signed up for. It's how we pay the bills. So here we go. This cave is all about double battles. So hopefully you're ready for a bunch. No, I don't remember this particular double battle. I don't remember any of these, to be honest. Um, I skip to their dialogue too. I can't make fun of them. When I do that, I need to stop. Slow down. Wayne and Cassidy, huh? So they have a Bidoof and a Baneary. So we have Craig and Brandy. Not great choices. Also considering that they don't really have a lot of oomph. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll gang up on this Bidoof first. It's weaker. So we'll see if we can confuse it while we're headbutting it. Might be able to flinch. And there we go. The Quick Claw is already paying off. It's not faster than Buneary, but it is faster than Bidoof, so we will take the turn. Great. I do believe that Bronzor is more of a special attacker, being a psychic type, but I could be wrong. I feel like a lot of psychic types kind of lean in that direction. Although there are a few that do not, so that's cool. And there we go. Flinch is already paying off. So we'll use Headbutt back on Buneary. And then hopefully, we can have Bidoof confuse itself to death. That would be amazing. Seems kind of dark, though. A little demented. So there we go, Craig. Headbutt machine. I just love the idea that I may be able to just headbutt my way to victory. Come on, Bidoof. Yes, do it. All right. We have foretold the future. Maybe there is a little bit of psychic powers being osmosis from Bronzor to me. No, I wish. Okay, so Buneri does have pretty decent special defense, so we will have Brandy focus on Bronzor instead. I really like Bronzor just because steel types are already pretty tanky and Bronzor in and of itself has a resistance to a pretty good amount of stuff. So it's pretty useful. I made a list prior to starting this game of Pokemon based on the Diamond and Pearl decks from the originals. Wasn't entirely sure what was gonna make the roster. I know that there was talk about how they might use the Platinum roster, they might use, or the Platinum decks, they might use the OG Diamond and Pearl decks. I believe this is closer in this game to the Diamond and Pearl decks with some caveats, but I made up a preliminary roster of Pokemon that I may or may not want to use on my team. And Bronzor was one of them, so it's kind of interesting now. I wasn't, I don't really have like a pre-plan of how I want to do this. I don't really have a set avenue of how I'm going to get these Pokemon. It's just kind of like a whatever happens, happens kind of thing. When I find them, I find them. I'm not looking up routes, I'm not looking up catch percentages, all that stuff. There's a few of them that I knew, like the Drifloon Friday thing. That was kind of a given. That was in the original. But 
I, yeah, I have no predisposition on where any of this stuff is, so I'm kind of just winging it. So, speaking of APOM now that we're on the screen with it, APOM is interesting. It was introduced in Gen 2. It has a Gen 4 evolution, which I think is really interesting. It's very strange looking. It's evolution. I mean, it, it itself is very strange looking. And I believe APOM is supposed to be based on a monkey, maybe. So... All right, so we got Brandy stats here. Let's take a peek at these real quick. Looks like attacking is not really the forte for Brandy. Very slow, but when we need to attack, they will protect. And we learn Gyro Balls. So that's a pretty interesting move. Gyro Ball is a decent steel type move. And Prison is a horrible psychic type move. So Gyro Ball is a move that does more damage if the offending Pokemon, offending, I guess the Pokemon we're facing, the plaintiff is, uh, are we the plaintiff? I don't know. Anyway, if they're faster than us, doing steel type damage is what you'll do. Quite a bit of it. So I'm not sure what the scale is. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know the algorithms. I'm barely able to walk two steps without facing another Bronzor. One of the downsides of trying to use weaker Pokemon is that you will have trouble running away from encounters. But yeah, Apom, going back to Apom. It's a monkey type Pokemon. And I don't really know if there are a ton of monkey type Pokemon. I guess in red and blue, you could sort of consider Primeape and Mankey to be a monkey. I think it's actually called like the pig monkey Pokemon. So I guess that sort of counts. Let's check double team real quick. By moving rapidly, the user makes illusory copies of itself to raise. It's evasiveness. It's kind of the opposite of using Flash, where you are boosting your evasiveness instead of boosting or lowering their accuracy. So it's kind of the the counterpoint to it. And I believe Double Team is like something that's not really allowed to be used competitively for some reason. I think Double Team's great. But we'll come back to this. We'll use that point in the road as a landmark so we don't get lost. But yeah, Apom, one of the monkey, few monkey type Pokemon. I feel like this just kind of loops around. Okay. Repels are not super robust. I think they only give you 50 steps. Yep. So we're going to be burning through these bad boys real fast. With our lack of direction being 1000%. So there's Mankey. There's Apom. I can't think off the top of my head if there's one in Ruby and Sapphire. But I know... At least in these games, you get the evolution to Apom, which is interesting. In black and white, there were the... There were the elemental monkeys that are kind of the gimmick. This guy wants... He will help lead us out of the cave. We can beat him off, so we'll try to do that. But anyway, there's the elemental monkeys, which weren't bad, but they weren't great. So... Oh, here you get a nice look. I'm just all over the place today. You get the nice look at Silicoon and Cascoon. So you can guess which one evolves into Dust Stocks, which one evolves into Beautifly. So we're going to gang up on Cascoon because it's weaker. And we'll try Gyro Ball for fun. And we get to use Quick Claw again, going faster. That's great. We're actually going to probably keep that on. Okay, that did a whole lot of nothing. So we're going to probably keep that on... On Bronzo for a while. Elemental Monkeys were the gimmick of the first gym in black and white. It was kind of a strange gym that they're trying to do something new. I don't know if I necessarily cared for it, but it was a thing. So there's that. Then you have the... You have uh, Groki, which was the starter. One of the starters of Sword and Shield. I'm not really too sure if there were other monkey types from... I mean, there's obviously Chimchar in this one. But if there are other... Ooh, there's Flinchin. Yes. Oh, they do have a Dust Stocks. There you go. That's a nice kind of lean into that. But you have... Uh, yeah, you've got some, some monkey Pokemon. I cannot talk today. You've got some monkey Pokemon. Monkey Pokemon. Which I think are really interesting and kind of fun. And it's like different kinds. Oh, he's shooting his goo on us. That's pretty uncool. Don't worry, we have a 
a buttload of berries. And that, the flinching, the quick claw, everything is kind of leaning in our favor right now. We'll see if we can take out the dust, dust stocks with the headbutt. And we'll confuse the Silcoon. I was always really mixed on bug Pokemon because I think for the longest time, the issue that I had with them, oh, that's not cool. How are they using Moonlight inside of a cave? The, the problem I had with a lot of bug Pokemon is they just weren't great. I feel like bug Pokemon kind of get a bad rap. And I don't believe that bug Pokemon had any strengths. Like they weren't effective against anything in the first generation. They obviously fixed that. But yeah, bug Pokemon didn't really have anything to lean into, which is really unfortunate. Kind of a bummer. Also, in advance, this is going to be a relatively longish episode just because I want to clear out this cave here. But yeah, bug Pokemon, I don't really feel like they got a ton of... I guess momentum for a while. The introduction of Heracross in Gen 2 was awesome. Heracross is fantastic. It's one of the strongest base level Pokemon that doesn't evolve. The only problem with Heracross is that its Gen 2 moveset is just horrific. It's not good at all. So you do have to deal with that. But, all right, we gotta be a little careful here. But Heracross in future, gens because there weren't really a lot of bug moves that's also part of it bug pokemon were weak bug pokemon were their their stats were just not great and you're dealing with there not being a lot of good moves so they they have fixed that it's been kind of nice they've done a pretty good job Ooh, this could be bad all right so hopefully we can get a jump on this we'll use this might be a waste. I'm not going to use any items because I might just have to revive Craig. All right. I mean, that Quick Claw is really coming in handy here. Let's see if we can knock out Beautifly. We can. Wonderful job, newbies. Good job, everybody. This is coming along much better than the past. We'll say that. All right, so we beat these kids off, and uh, ooh, we don't want to do that. And we were successful. Let's go ahead and do a little healing. We gotta speed things up here a little bit. We'll use two potions. We'll be able to buy plenty of those. Not worried about that. And we will use whatever the one is for poison. Petcha berries. We got a couple of those. We're doing great. Yeah. Use your items, kids. Don't forget. You have them for a reason. You don't want to go the Final Fantasy route of always having items and being too anxious to use them. No point in having them if you're not going to use them. So, gobble them up, use your potions, you'll get plenty in this game. You honestly don't really need to buy a lot of items. This game is relatively generous. So there's that. Alright, here's another stray Pokeball and escape rope. We like that. Speaking of ropes... How do we feel about Nerd's Rope? Delicious gummy candy covered in Nerds. I feel like Nerds are one of those candies that when I talk to people about them, they either have a nostalgia for them or they hate them. I've never really met anybody that's like, I like Nerds. Or sorry, I have met people who say either, either they like Nerds or they don't like Nerds, but I've never met somebody who's been over the moon about them. It's just kind of a... I guess a whatever candy for a lot of people. Okay. So this is a fight that we are definitely going to swap out of because Brandy and Craig are at a severe disadvantage. That would be bad news bears for both of them. So who is first? This is Craig's move, I think. So we're going to swap out to Bart. And we are going to swap out to Miguel. So let's get the type advantage here. I'm fine with not always being the one that has the advantage. I'm okay with that. There's plenty of times in life that I have not had the advantage, but I may do. We are the bit of the underdog. Yeah, this fight, these two Pokemon, Weasel and Metatite, are kind of annoying, and I don't want to risk it. So, we will do ourselves the favor. Let's go ahead and go for Weasel, and then I want to see if Miguel can survive a Brave Bird and take out this Metatite in one shot. Maybe. 
beautiful. That meta type can be kind of annoying. It's the Psychic Fighting type, which is an interesting type. But Brave Bird, as strong of a move as it is, does have the recoil effect, which is unfortunate. So everybody's getting levels, everybody's doing well. I like having Pokemon that just have absurd stats in the case of Craig and Brandy. Very high attack, very high defense. Very fun. Okay. So we're doing doing well so far. This cave though, wouldn't you know it, is uh, optional. It's probably best to do it now because the level of Pokemon that you're going to be facing right now aren't really conducive to a future fly through. I mean, you're not going to really gain a lot of experience. I mean, we're not really gaining any right now, so. There's that. And here we are being intimidated by the most ferocious of beasts, the Shinx. Let's see if I can swap Samuel in there to get some ground moves going on. Ground move, I should say. I only have one. Yeah, these battles can sometimes last a while just because you're not just fighting one Pokemon at a time, having to do two. Hopefully the Shinx is not using an electric type move on Miguel. It, it is. This sucks. Ooh, but Miguel, special defense coming in handy. We should be okay. I feel very confident. Two Nightshades puts that Shinx to bed. But yeah, these, uh, these situations with these double battles are very long. You don't get a ton of experience. There isn't really a better time to come and do these than now, though. So that's kind of my recommendation, is that if you do want to explore this cave, do it now. Because eventually, you're just going to have blips of experience. You're going to be doing these double battles, and you're not going to really... It's not going to amount to anything. You might get little upticks in your experience bar, but that's not really what you want. So if we continue on, we get lost. Great. Gonna burn through all these repels before I'm even at the end of the cave. There's a specific objective that you're here for, which hopefully we can find it soon. We'll see. I think we've fought everybody here. Great. So the only way to go it's to the right. I'm actually really glad I bought those repels because I would have been really annoyed if I didn't. So I believe this is the only way we can go. We're going to be smooshed by these two hikers. Let's heal up real quick. We're doing okay. So let's use that super potion. Why not? Heal 60. Miguel could use it. All right. Fingers crossed. As we get bombarded by these blustery fellows. Oh, he ate some wild mushrooms. They gave him gas. I can... I can definitely relate. He thinks we're lost. Ha! Huh. We're not... too lost. You can basically almost, like, devote an entire episode to just this cave. And we're gonna go ahead and do... the old Swaparoo. This is not really a great place for these guys to be, so Bart and Samuel will rule the day. Hikers usually have Rock-type Pokemon, and these guys are just not really a good fit. It's always nice to kind of get some of your forlorn team members back in the mix. Okay. Very nice. Dropping rocks on our Jello head. But I also think it's really funny that during double battles, they're just kind of like standing there hanging out. Not really emoting or anything. Just, you know, having a good heckin' time. Why not? Enjoying a little standstorm, a little doo 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 doo. You know, why not? So here we are, trapped in this cave. Hopefully, not gonna be too lost. We are given an escape rope. Rope. Escape rope? But uh, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to use that escape rope with what's actually deep in this cave. So that's a little bit of a teaser coming up. 
Hope you guys are ready for this extravaganza length episode. Hopefully we'll keep it manageable. This is not meant to be a bonus Pikmin length episode. That would not be ideal. Machop and OG. These are actually all OG first gen Pokemon. Remember Machop being something I thought was always really cool. Especially the evolutions of Machop. I think Machoke is great. Machamp. One of those Pokemon that maybe if you played the original one and you got to the Elite Four and you'd see that Bruno, Bruno Mars, please listen to me, Bruno Mars, had a Machamp. It always confused me because I never knew how to get one. You know, I was always very inept at these games. I'm like, how on earth do you get those? It was one of those trade Pokemon. You know, from the original ones, you have Golem, Kadabra, which turns into Alakazam, Gengar, Machamp the Four. I did not understand trading. It wasn't something that I really could be figuring out. Okay, let's see what Assurance does. Okay, that's not too bad, and our attack power is pretty good. Hey, is not the greatest, so let's go ahead and give our Dark-type Murkrow a Dark-type move and Assurance. If you go in the underground and you spend time hunting around, you can actually find Murkrow that are a little bit higher level than they have Drill Pack. So that's really nice is you can find Pokemon in these areas that have egg moves, which you maybe wouldn't necessarily find otherwise. Okay, so we've gone this way. Getting very lost, as per usual. I'm gonna use all my repels. I bought them for this exact purpose, so I'm gonna use them, and you're not gonna stop me. It is called the Wayward K for a reason. So, what's not to do than get ourselves a little lost? Do do do. Yes. So we are definitely on the lost variety. Sense of direction is not great. So I'm just gonna keep wandering around. Here's a rock we have not smashed yet. That's promising. Let's see what we find down here. Two rocks we have not smashed yet. Okay. It's a good sign. Or not. Wish we had something better than just regular repels. Let's see if we head south what happens. Oh, no more trainers, great. Hopefully you guys wanted an entire episode of just uh Double battles, because you're getting a boatload. These guys have a lot of Pokemon, so... Hopefully we can nip this in the bud real quick. Not trying to drag this one out. This is why I always wonder, like... People that do streaming for a living, if you want to call it that. How you get to the point is like, how... How do you run out of things to say? No, I guess part of it is like if you have a good stream of incoming messages from your people in the chat. But that can help, you know, they can give you kind of topics to play off of. But obviously when I'm recording content like this, it's just me, I'm a lonesome, hanging out. So I don't really have any sort of a uh, anything to play off of. I just got to come up with everything off the top of my dome. We're plenty good at Dome, so it's fine that, uh, you know, coming up with good ideas. Fresh things to talk about. I usually will wax nostalgic if I can. That's a good way to kind of make these games come full circle for me. Especially the older ones, because when I played the original Pokemon, I was a wee lad. And, uh, you know... Things back then were just a little bit simpler. I say that, they are also more complicated because I had no idea what I was doing. I had gotten Pokemon Red for a, for a birthday when I was young. And that was the game that obviously kickstarted all of this for me. It was my Kickstarter. But it was the game where I got to the point that I got stuck. There is a moment where when you're playing through those Pokemon games, you have to do the Sylph Co. Rocket Hideout, or whatever you want to call that. The Takeover. And 
there is a key card that you get in the middle of that tower and it unlocks basically everything. That key card is in between two teleporters that it's not really that hard to find. You know, you, you hit a teleporter, then when you're done, you, you wind up landing on it. And I didn't know what you could do with that. I thought that you were just kind of stuck. You're not. All you have to do is take the teleporter. When you land on it, you take it and you go right to the key card. But I could not figure that out for the longest time. And that actually had me put the game down for a while. I got stuck. I could not beat that area and I didn't I mean there weren't really guides there wasn't really like the internet when I was a kid makes me sound old but there wasn't really a way to look it up so you just kind of figure stuff out or you bought the kind of the prima game guide that's what you did and yeah that's kind of the uh, the way that you, you learned information or that you figured stuff out if you got stuck or you called the Nintendo hotline and you you blew through a bunch of money for your parents. Uh, we'll be quiet for a moment. Bart is evolving to a Gen 3 Pokemon. I think Bart's evolution is happiness-based, so Bart must be absolutely exploding with joy. And Bart has become Rosalia. Rosalia has a pretty cool sprite. Its hands are roses, as you can see. The Thorn Pokemon. Rosalia raised on clean drinking water and known to grow vividly colored flowers. And once learned Poison Sting. Let's see, is Poison Sting any good? Poison Sting. I mean, not really. And we're gonna, I don't really wanna get rid of Flash just yet. So I think we'll hold off on Poison Sting. There's not really, not a great move, not very strong. But uh, makes you wonder like if a Rosalia was, was like in a Pokemon game where it was like near like a uh, like a power plant or some place where there's like a lot of waste. It'd be kind of a cool variant if they could have Rosalia that reflected that. Oh, who do we have here? Small child? This is Mira. She's catching Pokemon and she got lost and she's very scared. So she wants to go to the exit. So we have Escort Mira here. She's gonna keep our Pokemon healthy all the time. No, I think I have actually fought all the battles in here. And it makes me wonder if I could just use the escape rope to get the H out. Because this place sucks. No, we cannot. Because this game is like, heck no. You are going the long way. You're going to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You're going to take Mira. There have been plenty of moments where we've had to do escort missions. Like in Link's Awakening with Marin. She had to go to the beach and blah, 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 blah. So there we were. Doing the nice gentlemanly thing. I think it's a nice touch that they gave Mira's hair. It's kind of put in like a bit of like a, a loop. But the one is obviously pulled down. Because that's what happens when you get lost in a cave. You, uh, your hair is the first thing to go. Obvious. I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I'm going to keep wandering around until I do. And I am running out of repels. You don't want to get lost on hikes, especially if you only have a couple granola bars. It would be dangerous. I feel like we're not too far from the entrance. If I could, <laughs> I could make my way through here, make my way downtown. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We made it. That wasn't too bad. And she wishes us well, and says goodbye, and then gives us nothing. So that was a huge wet fart. And I also didn't have any battles left for her, so I guess I don't really get to show Mira off. But anyway, that was the Wayward Cave. That's Flash. We'll be heading to Hearth Home City next time. Thanks for watching this extremely long episode. I'll see you guys next time for more Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.